Hey, it's Vanessa from CraftyGemini.com and it's almost 4th of July here in the United States so I figured I'd go this week with a quilting project with the 4th of July themed. Here's the table runner or table topper that we'll be making today. This is a great beginner quilting project. Now I say beginner but I am going to assume that you have the basics down. Things like sewing in a straight line and knowing what a quarter inch seam allowance is. So if you haven't started sewing or maybe you just recently started and you're not too sure if you can tackle a project like this, I'm going to put up a list now of the different tutorials that I have already posted to my channel that I recommend you watch before you take on this project. Like I said, it is a beginner project. It's a cute little tabletop and runner. As you can see, it's not finished on the back. So this tutorial, in order to keep it not from being super long of a video, I'm only going to show you how to make the quilt top. So let's start with the supplies we'll need and jump right into the project. So you'll need your rotary cutter with the corresponding mat, some quilting rulers, and then for your fabrics, I'm using 4th of July themed fabrics here. I have a third of a yard of the blue, half a yard of the white, and a third of a yard of the red. Because my piece of fabric was bigger than my actual mat, I like to fold it in half so it makes it easier to work with. First thing I do is get a long ruler and you see all these little threads coming out on the edge and some of the fabric is uneven. The first thing I'm going to do is even it out and to do that I'm actually going to get the fold here and line it up with one of my straight lines on the ruler as close to the side as I can so that I don't waste a lot of fabric. And I'm going to cut there and now I have one straight edge. Now I need to measure four and a half inches. So in this case I'm going to use the two rulers since this square measures exactly what I need. I again line up a straight line here with the fold, line this up on the fold, and I like to kind of hold this ruler down and slide this all the way up just to make sure that I'm all the way on the edge, the entire length I'm going to cut. So now I remove that ruler and where I'm going to cut here, I know that this from here to here measures four and a half inches, which is exactly what I need. So I have a strip. And I know I won't be able to get the 15 out of just this one strip, so I'm actually going to cut a few more. Do the same thing. Line this up with one of the straight lines here on the fold. Line this one up. Slide it up and look to see that I'm on the edge there. Line this one up again. And this just takes practice. The more you do it, the easier it'll get. Now from each one of these strips, I need to cut them out so that I would cut four and a half inches as well. So that the squares I get measure four and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before and straighten off this edge first so I have a straight edge to work with. And now I don't have to open up the whole strip. I can cut them in twos and that'll just save me some more time. So again, line this up with one of the lines on the ruler. This little ruler I know measures exactly four and a half by four and a half. And if I cut here, I already have two of the squares I need. So I just need 13 more of these. Now the other size squares of the white fabric that we need, instead of four and a half inches squared, are going to be four and seven eighths inches squared. So in order to do that, since I don't have, since I don't have a ruler that measures that same size, what I'm going to do is use a bigger ruler. So from here, I'm going to measure with this ruler, I'm going to put my corner that has the one and the one here. I'm going to look on this ruler for, so this is one, two, three, four inches. Here's the five. So the stick right before the five is going to be four and seven eighths. And I'm lining that same little stick all the way up the edge of my fabric. I'm going to line up my other ruler here, lining up a straight line with the fold. Slide this up, make sure I'm on, and that's four and seven eighths. So from here to here is four and seven eighths, so I know when I remove it and I cut here, that's exactly the size I need. And out of this size, from the white, we need six squares, and I'll be able surely to get that out of just one of these strips. Now 
Now the next thing we need to do is make our half square triangles. And to do that, you're gonna grab the colored pieces that you used, three of the red and three of the blue. And then remember, we also cut six white squares, the ones that measure four and seven eighth inches square. Okay, not the 15 that we cut over here that are just four and a half inches. Those you wanna keep separate. So take the ones that measure the same as these. You're gonna find the right side, which is the pretty side of the fabric of each one and you're gonna put them with the pretty sides of each of the fabrics touching. You wanna to make sure that they all measure the same, meaning you cut precisely. Now I like to turn it on point like this, so it looks like a diamond, and I'm gonna put a pin to the right side of the center line, and another pin to kind of like the left side of it. Then I'm gonna take a ruler and go from one point to the other point down here, and with a pencil or some kind of chalk marker or fabric marker or whatever, just measure a straight line down, like that. Now we're gonna take each of these prepared half square triangle pieces to the sewing machine and what you're gonna do is use your quarter inch foot, quarter inch presser foot on your machine and you're gonna use a basic straight stitch and you're gonna stitch one quarter inch to the right of the center line and then also to the left of this line. Get your rotary cutter again and your ruler. You're gonna put that ruler back on the line that you um, sketched out with the pencil. Not the stitching lines, but that center line that's running through them again. Line it up right on there and that's the line that you're gonna cut on. Okay, because now when you open this up, you see we have our finished half square triangles. And for each one of the blocks, you need two blue and two red. Now we go to our pressing surface and what I like to do is first lay it just the way you cut it to press those stitches in place Then I'm going to open it. I put the darker fabric to my left and I'm going to uh, press the iron right along that side. Try not to swipe too much so you don't mess up the square, kind of more stamp it up and down. And so you kind of lay it out how you want it and then start sewing them together. I like to sew in rows, so I'll sew this one to this one and then sew this one to this one, so I'll create that little row and then sew this row and this row and then you're gonna sew these two rows together and then add the third one and then you'll finally have that completed. to do is what I designed here in my little design was just to switch one of them up. The center one you can just turn it one uh, a quarter turn counterclockwise and that's just going to add a little variety to it. Now what you need to do is sew these three together in a row. Now the next thing to do is to add your borders and we're going to start off with the short borders. The red ones. They measure two and a half inches by twelve and a half remember. So if these match up exactly with twelve and a half your border should match up just like you see it here perfectly. And I'm basically going to put this here, turn it over this way, and I'm going to pin it down and then I'm going to stitch it so that when I open it, this border is here. And then you're just going to come to the other end and do the exact same thing with the other red strip. Pin it, sew it, and turn it out and press now it. Now we're going to take our blue borders and we're going to do the same thing. Our quilt top is complete and it's obviously not finished. We still need to go ahead and complete our quilt sandwich by putting some batting behind it, the backing fabric, and then attaching the binding, of course. But for purposes of this video, we are not gonna go through all those steps because it'll be too long. I do have some other videos and I'll put up a list here so you all can see other tutorials that I have that will help you finish off the project to make the completed quilt. Now you still have plenty of time to whip one of these up in time for the 4th of July picnic and I hope you guys will consider it doing it. And if you do try out this quilt top, feel free to upload pictures to our Facebook page, as always. I love to see what you guys make from my Crafty Gemini tutorials. See you next week.